This is Diver Whoopee Kid, Greg and Holly, a teen pregnancy story found over on the Loaded Diaper archival Google Drive. Thursday. I told Holly we should have used protection, but she kept telling me there was no way we could have a pregnancy on our hands. The test came back positive today, and here we are. I don't know how it got so far before I noticed, but I can already feel the baby kicking, so it might be too late for an abortion. I did my best to dress in a way that would hide the baby, but the way the entire class stared at me, I knew I failed. Even my parents have been avoiding eye contact with me. How could I let this go on so long before I noticed? I'm such an idiot. Holly and I are having a, a talk after school, just in case we can still get rid of it before something happens. Luckily, I didn't have to wait for the end of the school day to see Holly. They are having a fundraiser, so I tried to take the opportunity to see her. Unfortunately, Fregley ruined it. In my hormonal state, I slapped him across the face and hit me back in the stomach hard. I collapsed on the ground crying and Fregley was pulled off of me. I would be okay with that, but Roy called my parents and now when I get home, I will get a long lecture about safe sex. I wonder if they'll make me keep it. I hope not. Seeing dad couldn't have possibly gone any worse. When I got home, mom's car was gone and the smell of booze was so strong, I could smell it outside of the house. He didn't drink on weekends, so I knew he was in for some real sh as soon as I walked in, he grabbed me and yelled, No son of mine is getting pregnant with that slut, Holly! In his rage, he started throwing things at me. No matter what I said, I couldn't calm him down. Dad had never been like this before. I screamed and cried and tried to calm him down. Mom and Roderick were in town, so calling for help was no use. In desperation, I took my shirt off to show my pregnant belly in the hopes of him having some mercy. Big mistake! With no other options, I pushed him aside and ran out the front door. I only had a few seconds of a head start and dad was gaining on me, so I ran into Riley's house and slammed the door shut. I did my best to lock and I heard him pound on the door for a few seconds before yelling, AND DON'T COME BACK! The Jefferson family ran to the door to see what was going on. Looks like I'm gonna have a lot of explaining to do. Friday. Explaining everything to the Jeffersons was nerve wracking, but ultimately, they were understanding. They gave me a blanket and a pillow and some dinner before sending me to bed. I still wasn't sure if they were letting me stay or just giving me shelter for the night. Mr. and Mrs. Jefferson had already left for work by the time I got up, so I went to Riley's room to ask him and he said, Of course we will take you in, Greg. My parents wouldn't throw me out over this, and we could afford another family member. Afterwards, Riley called them for me. They told me I could stay home today and set up the guest room to my liking, and I must be exhausted after yesterday. I know skipping school is delaying the inevitable, but I'm still glad I did it. I can talk to Holly this weekend, and hopefully we can discuss if we're keeping it or not. Saturday I couldn't meet Holly at her house today because apparently it's Heather's 18th birthday and she was celebrating at rollarounds of old places. I was initially discouraged, but then I remembered this is where I got Holly to be my girlfriend. In commemoration, I put on the stupidest pair of glasses I could find and slid it on the floor until I found her. When I got to her, she said, You know you shouldn't skate while pregnant, Greg. That lesson sell introduction outside. Our meeting went surprisingly well. We played a bit at the arcade, had a pizza lunch with her family, and even discuss what baby names we would have if I kept it. We eventually decided that it would be Francis if it were a boy, and Emily if it were a girl. We did the math and I have 9 more days before I have to keep it. We are going to discuss it after they go out to eat at Sprigio's. They even invited me along. Though we didn't discuss that at length, Holly said her family wanted to talk to me about the baby. Here's hoping it goes well. Dinner with Holly's family was amazing. Heather seemed annoyed the whole time. But other than that, everyone had something good to say. Things got a tad awkward when they started asking me questions about the baby, but they were polite and not too judgmental. As they were driving me home, they told me they wouldn't force me to keep the baby, but if I kept it, they would let me move in and help care for the baby until Holly and I are economically stable to do it ourselves. I promised them I would think about it overnight, and tomorrow morning at church, I would tell them my decision. I can't believe I only gave myself one night to decide, but if I keep it much longer than a week, I'm stuck with it. Even if I abort the baby, I know the Hills and the Jefferson family will continue to support me, but is it possible my real family would take me back if I did? Sunday. I made my decision. I know it won't be easy, but it's the best for everyone. I wanted to tell the Hills family at church, but I knew my parents would be there, and I'm not ready to see them again. Oh, Holly just got home. Time to tell her. Hi, Holly. This is Greg. Holly was thrilled the at the news, and her parents told me over the phone we could start getting their house ready on Wednesday. In other news, I've had the strangest craving for seaweed and octopus-flavored ice cream lately. Must be from watching Fregley eat on his front yard every afternoon. Speaking of Fregley, the Jefferson told me he's coming over tonight to apologize for everything. I hope he can act somewhat normal when he does. Fregley's in the living room watching TV right now. I've gotta admit, I was not happy at the prospect of seeing Fregley again, especially after what he did on Thursday. But I need to know where he gets that seafood and octopus ice cream, and it wasn't like this was my idea. I didn't know what to expect when Fregley knocked on the door, but it started out okay. It quickly devolved into the dinner I had with him. He chewed with his mouth open, picked his nose, and talked about the things you really shouldn't talk about while eating. 
But overall, it was worth it. He told me he was off his meds when he attacked me, and he hadn't realized I was pregnant. I haven't fully forgiven him, but his apology gift was a bogle coupon for ice cream I've been wanting. It's only available at Kmart. Not too surprised Frankly does a shopping there. Friday. I was on my way home from school today after serving my final detention. Wasn't as bad as usual, but I'm glad it's over with. Oh, and mom wants me to move back in, but she refused to respect my choice to keep the baby. Today she tried her most bold attempt at getting me to remove it by hiring this guy to follow me around in his truck and tell me it's now or never. June. Heather moved off to college yesterday, so I'm now desperately moving everything into her room so I can move in with Holly. Honestly, I'm fine with all the room decorations Heather left behind, but her parents told me how to use my own bedding. Things are going great with the Jeffersons in the hills. As a matter of fact, Holly and I are getting married in October. The relationship with my family has only gotten worse. Anytime I walk past my dad, he screams explicitis at the top of his lungs. Mom tells me how much of a disappointment I am. Manny yells out Ploopy. And I don't know about Roger, because he's in California trying to get a gig for a loaded diaper. I can feel the baby moving every day. It reminds me of how proud I am to have kept them. So, I don't regret sending them to my parents. The worst part of it all is I have to schedule around not running into them. I can't go to church anymore, and when I go out to do some shopping, I have to specifically plan a route not running to my family. The only good thing about it is I don't have to go to church anymore, and believe me, that makes my weekends so much better. On the other hand though, getting screamed at by my parents is so stressful, Rowan and I had to make a specific route just to avoid walking past my old house. Thursday. Today is my 17th birthday. I got to spend it at the country club, so that was nice. I got to drink expensive smoothies, sit in the sauna, and went out to lunch with the Jeffersons. The only problem was when I started eating cake and unwrapping presents, a bunch of random guys came up and tried to mooch off my cake. I got a copy of Twisted Wizard 2 from Rowley, some jeans from Mr. Jefferson, and the rest was just money. I wound up getting over $350. I even got a package from Roderick. It was a shirt that said Loaded Diaper, and he also included a note. At least one family member is on my side. Wednesday. I got an ultrasound today. Well, there's good news and bad news. The good news is I'm having twins. The bad news is I'm having twins. As happy as I am to be having a two amazing kids, yeah, it's going to be so much more work than I anticipated. One is a boy and the other is a girl. While well, the boy is healthy and strong, the girl is tiny and very weak. I'm on my way home to tell Holly. I won't tell about the problems with Emily because just knowing we're having twins will be enough news for one day. August. School starts in a few weeks. Aside from the obvious reasons, I really will miss my water jazz classes. Ha! <laughs> Suck it, dad. Wait, is that Roderick? I haven't seen him since December. Let's see what he has to say. When I got in the car, Roderick took off, barely giving me time to strap in, blasting music and going over every speed bump in town. Eventually, we pulled up at an unfamiliar restaurant. We ate lunch, talked about life, and Roger says he's got a girlfriend. Not only that, but Loaded Diaper's first album, Exploded Diaper, sold 10,000 copies in the first week. So far, it's sold 25,000. I had no idea where this was going until all of Roderick's bandmates came out of nowhere and started playing their song. I had no idea what to catch on so quickly. Thursday. Roderick and the rest of his band left today. We had a nice week. Apparently, Roderick was originally going to visit the rest of the family, but considering how they were telling all about what a terrible son I am, he decided to visit me instead. Surprisingly, Roderick is really excited about the thought of being an uncle, and promised me to come back for Holly and I's wedding in October. Still, I wish he wouldn't be gone for two months. In other news, Emily's still a lot smaller than Frances. The doctors say it isn't anything to worry about during the pregnancy, but she may suffer from a few birth defects. Frances, on the other hand, is doing very well, and we have no worries about how he'll turn out. October 14th. Our wedding day is finally here, and it was almost exactly what everyone wanted. I hadn't seen Holly in her wedding dress, and I gotta say, she looks stunning. My suit is okay, but it just wasn't made to accommodate pregnant men. For whatever reason, Heather was pissed through the entire wedding. She even tried to object when the pastor asked for objections, but we ignored her. It all came to a head when Roderick surprised us by having Loaded Diaper form at the wedding instead of the band. Somehow, he wound up pushing the wedding cake on top of her. I'd be mad if it wasn't so funny. After the Heather cake fiasco, the wedding ended pretty quickly. The good news is as a wedding present, Mr. and Mrs. Hill gave us $500 and 3 days at a hotel to spend our honeymoon. Holly told me she brought her favorite movies for us to enjoy tonight. Unfortunately, our tastes are completely different in that regard. I'm hoping we go to the amusement park tomorrow, instead of watching, well, this. I may not be able to ride too many rides this time around due to being 8 months pregnant, but this will be the last time I could ever go to an amusement park without dragging Francis and Emily along. December. Holly and I took Emily out of the NICU today. We've been told to bring her back in if we see anything wrong. We've been warned she may never be in good health, and only time can tell if she can ever properly walk. The good news is Francis is almost the complete opposite. He has been a very strong little guy. Very lively too. And we have no worries about his childhood health. Even his birth went surprisingly well. 
Parenting friends has already had me at wit's end, and not taking care of Emily might be too much. I may not be able to write in this thing for a while. December 14th, 2029. It's been 10 years since I've last written this thing, and an eventful 10 years it's been. Roger's become highly successful with his heavy metal songs. He even gave us tickets to his Christmas Eve show, and those sold out on the first day. I've been working from home. I actually got a comic creator job at Funbrain. Good thing to let me work from home, because Emily had to be homeschooled due to being unable to walk in on the autism spectrum. Not that it makes me love her any less. Francis has been taking after Holly. He's one of the most popular kids in school, and while he isn't an A student, he gets B averages. A few months ago, we had another baby, Jane. This time, I didn't hide anything from Holly during the pregnancy. I'm so glad I never aborted Francis and Emily. They, and Holly, make me the happiest man on earth.